Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here at Garage Time TV. I am Marshall and we are jumping back on our Barn Find X19. Now several weeks ago, I think it's been six, maybe seven weeks at this point, we went and picked up this X19, it's 86, out of a shed carport kind of thing. It was covered in dust and horribly disgusting and spider webs and really, really dirty and we have come a long way since then. But if you have not seen the series from the beginning, I highly encourage you to pause this, go to our playlist, um, I'll put a link down in the description and start from the beginning to see where we started and kind of where we're at so you guys are all caught up. But there's some big stuff happening in this episode today. We are going to put some new coilover suspension from Vic Autosports and I'm going to show you how to do that. we also got a Prima Big Brake Kit, which we're going to be putting on our front brakes, all new modern calipers on our Classic. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. It's a lot of stuff already. And on top of that, we've got our tires mounted onto our new Vic Autosports wheels and I'm so excited to show you guys those when we get to that point. Now I've already done the passenger side. I've kind of got my hands dirty, literally, and torn a few things. But I already know what I'm doing, doing a good test run on that side. So we're waiting on our rear rotors to show up with new brake pads uh, from FedEx. We're waiting on those to come in. And we'll be able to do the, the rear on that. So first things first is I think we're gonna start in the front. We're gonna start with the coilovers. We're gonna pull off our rotors, our brake caliper. We know we're gonna be replacing that anyway. Pull all of that out of our way and jump in first into the coilover suspension. Really, really nice setup, and I'm really excited to put these together. I'm gonna to show you guys how to put them together, how they get assembled, and we're gonna install them. Um, really easy, really simple to do, as long as you have the right couple tools. So, enough talking, let's jump into some nice new parts that are gonna put this thing back on the road, and I think when it's all said and done, we'll be able to drop it on top of those new tires and wheels and see what it looks like, because these are adjustable coilovers. You know, we can adjust these and raise or lower the height. So we may be messing with that a little bit because uh, we have to lift the car to adjust the purchase of the coilovers. Anyway, that's a lot of hypothetical. We got to get to the end of the line to do that. So let's jump in first and hit to the front and start pulling apart our brake calipers, our rotors, and start disassembly of our old coilovers. And we're going to assemble those new ones and start getting those installed. So first thing we've got to do is pull out our hard brake line from our rubber line. Now, if you're going to save these, um, you, know, you want to really, really be careful with the rubber line, but these are clearly old, um, so we're not going to be saving these, especially with our Prima brake kit upgrade. So we're going to pull out this these locking clip, if it'll cooperate. Here it comes. So what I've done over the past 48 hours or so is I've come out at night before dinner and then again before bed and just sprayed this down with some PB blaster. Um, if you break off one of these lines, it's going to be a really, really sad day for you. But uh, hopefully that's not going to happen for us. So this is a 17 millimeter on the bottom. And I've got a flare wrench. Um, so I've got the only one side exposed to the other on the line. But this ensures that we're hopefully not going to round off our nut here on our brake line. So I put them pretty level and I just pull apart and I push against the bottom and it breaks loose like that. That way it doesn't move on you. Get that kind of broken loose. Then I just hold the bottom here and I use a regular 10 and uh, start backing this out little by little. Finally, you're gonna have fluid. So let me grab a tray here. Fluid is a good sign. We'll stick that down there so we don't get it all over the garage floor. So it'll catch it as it comes out of the reservoir there. Once we get this all the way off, what we're gonna do next is, uh, there's two 17 millimeter bolts on the back side of this bracket, this kind of D-shaped bracket here. There's two 17s and the whole thing should come off. That will uh, take care of all of that. I'm not gonna worry about the pins or anything like that because we're not gonna be reusing it. I'll probably put it on the shelf as a rebuildable core. So if we ever run into another Fiat in the future, which, you know, who knows, maybe we will, then we can uh, rebuild this set and have some good ones ready to go. Um, on the back, I've already started to do some of it, but I took some of it off preemptively to try and paint some of these pieces. There we go. And that's what I like to see is some running fluid, and it's really dark, so it's not the best fluid to see, but we got some running fluid, meaning that we've got some space in the line for stuff to flow. It's not all clogged up. One thing that you'll sometimes run into is these rubber lines just collapse on the inside and they're just no good anymore, so you just gotta replace those. But we're gonna grab our socket, two 17 millimeter uh, bolts on the backside, and this whole caliper will come off. Then we can slide off our rotor, 
and there's a 10 millimeter bolt that's holding on our back uh, dust shield. We'll take that off, kind of wire wheel it, and then shoot it with some paint. So that way it'll be ready to go uh, and start drying while we start working on this coilover. So let's go through all this really quick, real simple. Again, two bolts, slide this off, 10 millimeter, dust cover comes off, boom, all exposed. A few moments later. So now we've got everything out of the way. We just took a wire wheel and kind of brushed off the, the hub here. And then we also took off a bunch of this debris that's all around here. Um, what we're gonna wanna do is remove these two bolts here. They're 17 millimeter. Just gonna have a socket and a wrench to hold the other side. And then um, there's three 10 millimeter bolts on the top side that hold those. And hopefully we should be able just to kick out this bottom and it should drop out so we can get it out. So you can see it just kind of fell out for us here. Um, if you live in the rust, rust belt, uh, I feel really bad for you. Um, but being down here in Texas, this is kind of the perks of where we live. This stuff just kind of comes apart. So it's slid out. We're gonna probably try and move this knuckle out a little bit. There it goes. And out comes our original strut coilover looking thing. Strut, I guess is technically what it is. But this thing has definitely seen better days. It is gross and the rubber is rock hard. That's what she said. <laughs> and uh, at least the shock looks okay, but yeah, we're just gonna replace all this. So let's start reassembly on our new one so we can install it. All right, so we're gonna start the assembly of our coilover. Now it comes in kind of prepackaged a little bit, but there's a couple things. Um, I moved the purchase all the way down. And there's two different styles. There's ones where the brackets are in the middle here or up towards the top. And there's another one where the brackets are at the bottom. The ones at the bottom go in the rear of the car. So bottom, back. That's how I remember. So make sure you guys are using the right one for your right application. So this one has it on the top, so it's forward, meaning front. Okay, that's kind of how I remember it. Hopefully there's a way for you to help remember that there. So what I do is I move the perch all the way down to the base of the threads. And we're going to have to start with our bearings here. So they come with two shims and a bearing for each. Now this bearing is really important to the performance of these coilovers. That's kind of really what sets these apart. Is that bearing sits between these two plates right here and it sits at the bottom of the perch. Hopefully you guys can see that there. Yes. All right. Just want to make sure you can see. So it sits at the base of the perch down here. What this allows us to do is this base spring, this one here, it allows this to freely spin on that bottom. So it resists binding. So when you're hitting those turns or uh, more aggressive driving on the track or anything like that, it'll allow it to spin while it's compressing rather than binding up. When it binds up, it's when you start skipping and you start losing that traction and that's when you're losing that advantage. So it's really important to have these. Um, it's really what sets these apart. So it's a really, really good piece um, that I never even thought of would really be needed on these. So it's really nice to have them. Um, we do need to pack these with grease. So I'm gonna take a second and grab some high temp red grease and just lightly skim coat it. They're just kind of like bearings on your car. You wanna pack them with grease um, and do both sides, just a light coating, just to keep them lubricated um, and so they don't overheat and get all damaged. Um, so we're gonna take a second and do that. And we're gonna slide these on. A few moments later. All right, so we've got our bearing coated with grease. We're gonna add the shim to the bottom in the top, just like that. Try not to get grease all over the place. So I can wipe it off my fingers. We're gonna slide this on first. There to the bottom. That's how it sits on the perch, nice and centered on there, okay? The next thing we're gonna add is this base spring here. Add this on next. Okay. Then we're going to add one of these black spacers. It's like a coupler to go between the base spring and our over the top spring or actually adjustable, I don't know what you call it, the actual loaded spring that carries a lot of the weight there. Don't ask me. I'm not a scientist. I'm not like perfect on the verbiage of all this. Now, this is the important part. Spring. What spring goes where? Now, there's different tensions, aka different strengths, but they're printed on there. So this one says 225. And this one says 165. There's also a 275, so it's even stronger than this one. So you wanna make sure you're putting your heavier spring 
on the back of the car. That's where most of the load is, where the engine is, that's where your transmission is. You know, you're seated more towards the back of the car. It's where a lot of the weight is, not necessarily on the front. So you wanna have a stronger spring in the back. Now I did also pick up the 275 spring um, and they look really similar, but let me grab it. And here is the 275 spring. Now it's kind of maybe tough to tell on camera, but you can see the thickness of the spring. It's thinner, medium, and then thick. So there's a big difference between this is the 165 and this is the 275. Same size as far as height, but look at the thickness of that spring. This is gonna carry a lot of the load. So you're gonna want it, in our case, the 165 in the front and the 225 in the back. Now I did pick up that heavier one, so if we ever want to swap these out for a track day, you know, if Fiat Freakout is coming, if we want to take it to the track, we can swap out these coils, be a little bit more aggressive, and just move these 225s up to the front and put the 275s on the back. You can keep it that way if you want. You know, you can run that if you'd like, but I'm not going to choose to do that. So we put our spring on after that. We're going to add on our little rubber protective boot on top of all of this. Feed it through here. It helps if it's vertical. Not fighting gravity. And it also helps if you take the nut off the top. Put the boot on for the third time. Okay, nice. Then we've got the last little bit here is we've got a little top hat looking thing. And it goes skinny side down. And then we've got a big retaining washer on top of that washer spacer thing i don't know science is what it is and then on top of all of that we've got our cap now what's important is these face the outside of the car so the wheel is here this faces opposite of that direction so it goes towards the middle and there is a spacer in there like a sleeve and you see we're pushing it all down. Everything comes together. Very nice. Just make sure it's all seated correctly. You can see our threads come through the top. We're just gonna do that just hand tight on there right now. And boom. Just like that, you've got your coil over put together and there's no tension on this. We have our perch all the way at the bottom. When we get it into the car, we'll slide it up to about midway uh, just to match the other side of the car. We measured seven centimeters up uh, from the base of our black threaded piece. So we're going to adjust that all the way up to match. Um, so we're just going to install this the same way as the older one came out. But there is a slight difference, so I'm going to get this put in there for you guys. And then um, I'll show you that little bit of difference with some hardware that is included in this kit um, to work on your camber as well to make that adjustable. So we've got it installed here on the top end. I like to do those top three nuts first. It just kind of helps uh, hold it here. I just have them finger tight. I don't have them super tight. It gives us a little bit of movement, but also holds it up so you don't wear out your arm being super tired. So we've got that installed. We've got a new uh, nut and bolt. This is stainless steel, so it's not gonna rust on us, but this is an important part. But what we wanna do is install our bottom one first. So I can get in here. So we're leaving it loose a little bit. Gives us some wiggle room if I can get it in here. There we go. We're going to get in our bottom nut first, bottom bolt and nut. Okay. So I've just got that in there. I'm just going to put the nut on there just to hold it in place. Now this bolt is pretty special. It's not perfectly round. It's got two flat sides to it. That's because the washers that were on it are, if I can keep it in my hand, are cammed. So you can see it's thicker on the bottom than it is on the top. So what you're gonna do is put one of the provided lock washers on first. Then you're gonna put one of these cammed washers on here next. So I'm just gonna put it on the back side like that so it'll fit then we're going to slide it through with that thick side facing outwards towards us then we're going to put the other lobe facing out as well we want them to be symmetrical it's very very important because that's going to adjust our camber when we go get this aligned 
So our other lock washer and then our nut. So I'm going to throw that on and I'll bring you in and you can see how the cam, when you rotate this bolt, so if I rotate it here, that washer rotates with it and there's a stud on the back there. You see how it starts to touch. Well, when I touch it, if I can get it on there, thank you. You'll see that the the camber adjusts in and out. Okay, so that's how you adjust the camber when it goes to get aligned, and that's going to be really nice for when we go racing, which I doubt we'll do, but you know, freak out track days would be kind of fun. We can adjust the camber. To Camper in just a little bit to get a little bit tighter handling, and then always after the track, adjust it straight back out to be vertical again. So it's a pretty nice feature uh, to be able to adjust the camber like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to leave it in a kind of middle ground area. Again, we're going to go get this aligned. So we're going to tighten this down. Then we're going to go back up top, tighten these three down. Then we're going to torque the top nut down. I don't remember these. Oh, these are 51 foot pounds of torque on these, and then 43 foot pounds on the top and then we'll be able to start working on our Prima brake kit after this. So our dust cover is still drying. So I think there's a good opportunity to kind of show you what we're gonna be doing here. But the Prima brakes, don't know what they are. It's modern car brakes for our classics. It's got everything we need. It's much easier to slide, um, you know, so it'll engage the brakes much easier. I mean, look how easy that'll move compared to the little slide pins that were on our old set and they drag and you have to grease them and it just, the dirt sticks to the grease. And I mean, let me show you these are what it's supposed to technically slide on, but uh, you're not getting any slide out of that. And so with the modern brakes, we're going to get better engagement, smoother engagement, and it'll be a lot safer uh, driving this thing. So this kit comes with everything you're gonna need. It does come with the brackets on the back. Now the L is for left driver's side. It has the other side, the passenger side has an R. So what we're gonna be doing is attaching this to the back of our knuckle here. So on the very bottom, we're gonna be attaching this to the back. We're gonna have a nut, sorry, a, a bolt go through it. Very tight fit, these are like CNC machined to a precise fit, so they are pretty tight. There we go. And these are 17s, 17 millimeters nice thick bolts. So we're going to have one there. As we slide that through, we're going to put on a lock washer and a nut just loosely just to hold it on. Lock washer and a nut to loosely hold that on there. Okay. So what we're going to do next is grab our caliper and we're going to be going into these threaded holes here. So as we attach it, when the rotor's on, and the dust shield, we're going to attach it here. It's going to be kind of tough to see and tough to film it, but I wanted to show this part. It's pretty important. Um, and then those two holes here are what go into those threaded holes there on the back to hold it in place. So let's grab our dust shield. It should be dry now. If not, we'll throw some extra heat at it, attach that, and we'll start assembling all this. We do uh, have a stainless steel. Uh, not stainless, a steel brake line. Nice new brake lines. Um, we've got the spacer on it for the rotor and everything. Um, let's grab that dust shield and then we'll move on to the next part. Now we've got our dust shield on. We reinstalled our bracket because it has to go through the dust shield on the bottom. We're gonna bust out our nice new rotor. And you may be able to see, especially like right there, there's some oil on these rotors and it's to protect them from rusting on the shelf while they're waiting to be purchased. And that's with any rotor, modern car, these cars, any in general. So what you want to do is get brake clean and actually use it for what it was intended for and spray it on there and wipe off all that coating. That way it doesn't eat up your new brakes because it will gum up the brakes and you definitely don't want that. So now we've got that on there cleaned off. It does come with a spacer. It's going to put our spacer on there and then we're going to put our rotor, make sure they're all in the same orientation roughly where'd you go well as i say that now this is kind of what separates me from maybe what you're going to do is if you're going to go back to using these locating pins 
this is the time you'd install these. Now I'm gonna install them just to help kind of hold everything in place. But I'm not gonna be using these because my new wheels from Vic Auto don't need these. I've actually got the stud kit and we're gonna install that as well, but it's got threaded studs rather than these awful bolts. And I don't want that sticking out when I have nice new wheels on there because these are just plain ugly. So we're gonna be installing that as well. But we're just gonna be using these for now just to roughly hold it on. It's not like super tight or anything like that. So now is when the caliper comes into place. Now it's very important to make sure you have it oriented to where the hole for the brake hose is at the top and the bleeder is at the top because you want this to be, it'll eventually be like that on there. That's why it's got this funky square on the top is it actually locks up against that finished edge there and it locks it in place. So we're going to take our remainder two bolts and lock washers and these are what's going to be used to hold on the caliper to that uh, CNC machined bracket on the back to these threaded holes. All right, so this is the nice part about modern brakes is they just slide open, you put in your pads, bam, bam. Make sure those are all the way seated. Flip it up, squeeze it by there. Work it around this top stud here, and then we'll feed in our 13 millimeter bolt all the way to the top and it'll lock it in place. You can put some brake sliding grease on here. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to go back and do that, but I don't have any on me right now, but we're gonna get this bolt put back on there. Then we start moving on to installing our nice new braided brake line and uh, putting in those studs. That's gonna make a big difference. Now we're gonna start reattaching our stainless brake line here. Super nice quality, well worth the money. They are a little bit on the pricier side, but you just can't put a value on peace of mind sometimes. So these would be nice, good brake lines for us. We're gonna put these in there a little finger tight for now. Kind of get it started here. Grab our 17 and our 10 and start reattaching those. Okay, with those tight, we're gonna reinsert our clip, which we set over here to the side. There's a little groove in there that this clip sits in. You have to kind of set it up there. Really push. Here we go, helps hold it in place. Now the next part, you need your banjo bolt. It's called a banjo bolt because it's got that hole in there. It allows the brake fluid to pass and you need two copper washers. One for the top, you're gonna place it through the line and the other one on the bottom and those are like crush washers that keeps the tension. So this flat edge sits up against the machine finished side of that brake caliper. We're gonna remove our little yellow plug, put on our other crush, crush, crush washer, if I can speak English. And we are going to put on our banjo bolt. It's really hard to do when you can't see anything. Look. So we've got that banjo bolt with the copper washers on the top and the bottom nice and squared off, attached on the back. And that is all of our brake kit installed. Super easy, straightforward process. Just takes a little bit of time to do. Um, when you're reinstalling the caliper here, trying to get it up after you install your brake pads, it helps to loosen this bottom 13 millimeter. It really gives it some room to move. Then you can slide it up and over. So when we go to start bleeding our brakes, our caps are on the right side. Our dust cover is all installed. Looks way, way better than that hot mess with that as a brake caliper. Much more confident in this modern technology, well worth the money, especially with those stainless, I don't know if they're stainless, they're steel braided line and they're way better. So we're gonna allow this to, uh, I think I'm gonna crack that open, let it start gravity bleeding into our little tray here, try and get some fluid fresh into that caliper. That way it helps with our, uh, oh, that's an eight. Helps if you get the right size, but we'll crack that open. And then we can start moving to our last coilover into the back while we're still waiting for FedEx to get here. So we did a lot of the same thing. We removed the caliper, those two 17 millimeter bolts um, and the dust shield came off. Um, they had the two retaining studs. Again, we're not gonna be using these. We're gonna go over to the uh, stud kit, the wheel stud kit from VIX. We removed that. Again, exposing our coilover on the back, the two 17s, the three 10s on the top. Uh, we're going to take a wire wheel here, 
uh, clean up all of this surface rust, get this nice clean mating surface. Um, and then we're gonna start reassembly. And it was like perfect timing because the FedEx guy just showed up like 15 minutes ago. So we timed that pretty well, or I guess FedEx technically timed that very well. I didn't time anything. Uh, I don't know, I just worked here. Anyway, always really well packaged. We've got our brake pads, our nice new brake pads. Oh, and would you looky there, we've got stickers. Who does not love stickers? You guys know Jesse over at Eldest Builds, his 124 series. He just got himself an X19. If you guys have not seen his content, please make sure you do. These are our, actually our new stickers. I don't even have access to these yet. These are the new stickers from VIX. So when you order it from them, you get our logo with all three cars we've done, the trifecta, the 850, the two 124s, and now the X19, you wanna pick that one up. Retrocast, he's a young guy. He has a really good uh, little series on a 124. You wanna make sure you check him out. And of course, always check out our friends at Vic Auto Sports. You can never go wrong with stickers, especially for the back of the car window or on this car, you know, these will probably all go on there or uh, on the toolbox, you can't go wrong with that. Anyway, our invoice, of course. Oh yeah. And our new rotors, which are way better than this hot mess. But we will clean up our space to reuse that. So what we're gonna do is a lot of the repeat. Um, we're just gonna bust off this strut first, replace it with our new one, same assembly. Um, just remember the new ones have the hooks at the bottom while the front ones have them in the middle. So let's make sure you pay attention to that. Look at that, all coated and everything. Ready to install, awesome. Let's uh, see if we can time lapse through this pretty quick, bust this all loose, break it all down put a new one in, clean all this up, all the good stuff, and uh, start getting stuff put back together. All right, I do want to take a second because we're getting to the point where we're going to start putting our brakes back on. You saw how easy it is just to reinstall that um, coilover, just like the front one, just drop it out, new one in, torque it down, torque it up top, boom, done, all new suspension. The only difference is we're going to have to uh, use our tool to adjust this up before we put all of our tires on and make sure that the same height on all four corners. Now what we're going to do is instead of just slapping this on there and then using our locating studs, we want to do the stud kit that Vic Auto sells. Now this is literally an upgrade I didn't even know I needed. And it's so much easier to use studs versus these awful bolts. You have to like fight that locator thing to try and get the factory wheels to sit. And you've got to hand thread all these in. It's just a pain. Get rid of that. This is the best upgrade you can do that you never know you needed. And that's just gonna take some thread locker, dab some on there, use red, blue, whatever you got, something on the short end of the thread, because you see there's a non-threaded portion, that short end just goes into the stud location, started by hand, just like that. And it's a six millimeter hex. Um, I've got these from Gear Wrench. They're just attachments. And you just drive it home. Boom, you have studs. Now you do need to torque these. Um, definitely want to torque them. Um, I think it's like 55 foot pounds, somewhere around there. You want to torque those, get them all the way seated. But we're just putting thread locker slide it in just like that we'll torque it all down at the end 
but just to help us get our rotor on and stuff like that. So good slather of thread locker. One more. Just like that. Give them a good tap. Okay, those are installed because we've got the hex on the ends. And I'm just gonna orient these the same way as where our original locating pins would go. Done. Put your wheel on, brakes on. They even come with these lug nuts with uh, the locking style lug nut. You thread them on after your wheel and boom, done. These are such a good investment. I cannot even tell you. I wish I would have had these a long time ago. Like a long, long time ago. Like when I first started, I got these on the black 124 and they were oh, so good. So we're gonna take some brake clean, clean up these rotors, uh, get some of this coating off. We may have to, I think, if I remember correctly, take a little, my angle die grinder and kind of scrape it off lightly with like a scotch bright type pad to get it all clean and then brake clean it, slide it on. After we slide it on, we're gonna be using those same um, two brackets here. We're using the factory brakes on the back. These actually were have fluid when I pulled off the brake line. So we're just gonna reattach these. Uh, I think I've got the right one here. Maybe I've got the wrong side. Yeah, I've got, no, this is right. So that'll go on there there. And then our caliper, I left the handbrake attached, slides back into it with our sliding pins. We're gonna clean these up and grease these up. And we have some new pads as well, but let's get those Rotor's cleaned up and we'll knock all this out. So we cleaned up these a little bit and we added just a thin layer of grease to really help them slide in there. A few moments later. All right, so after much fighting, we got them in there, but we have these little locking cotter keys that go in the little holes that were on the other side of them. One there. Oh, oh, there's the other one. Thought I lost it. Where are you? Down here somewhere. Oh, there you are. All right. I know I've had my big fat head in the way most of the way, but I promise. It's not much easier to get you back in there. So next thing we're gonna work on is up here, is getting the steel, the, the steel braided line from the back up to here. So let me grab that. And we have our steel lines here, but we also have a lock washer, so we wanna make sure we throw one of those on there. We have to screw it into the caliper first because once we get it attached to the top, we're not gonna be able to spin it like this to tighten it. And I believe this is a 14 millimeter hex on there. I think, don't quote me on that. What is it? Is it 17? No. No. Well, what are you? Why are you fighting me so much? Okay. Anywho, we're going to get this crushed down on here. Because we want that washer to be all the way down. All right. Well, for some reason it's a 5 eighths. So now you know. I uh, learned for you. Get the nice and tight on there. Really crush down that washer. We don't want any leaks here. It's on there pretty good. Once we get the wheel uh, attached, it'll seat it all the way. This is where it's kind of nice to have those locating pins because it will hold it down. You can see that we barely scrape, which means we have good pressure, but uh, almost. I like still like the studs better. Last thing to do is attach our line on the top here. Snap our retaining clip in with a love tap. There you go. The next day. All right, well, it's the next day. We let all of our painted parts really cure overnight and to be honest, it was dinner time, so we were ready for the day and done. So we called it night, let everything dry up overnight, and now we are back at it. Now we've got everything reassembled from yesterday. Uh, we've got our dust shields back on. Make sure you put them on when you go to reassemble your new parts, because I didn't. 
So I take everything off to put the dust shield back on to then reassemble everything back on. That's why I'm already dirty and gross today. But one thing I did want to mention is this spacer. Now this spacer actually goes behind our Prima brake rotors. Um, and this is what protrudes it out just enough so the caliper is nice and centered on the rotor. Now if you have a post 79 car, you're gonna to need to bevel the backside edge of this aluminum piece. Um, they originally come with a square cut edge, which is pre-79, but ours, since we're in 86, has a beveled edge on our hub. So what I did is I went to the bench and I actually ground it out to be flat. And it looks like this with it all beveled. You see it's got a rounded edge there compared to the straight square edge that it originally came with. Now, if you don't have it beveled, your rotor's not gonna sit flat against the hub and it's gonna wobble while it's on there. So you're not gonna be able to get past your brake pads. But when you bevel it, you can get through your brake pad just like butter. Oh God, it's so good. Mmm, mmm, so good. So again, if you're post 79, make sure you bevel that. So we're gonna finish putting this one on our other side because we had to bevel this one as well. I didn't realize they weren't sitting flush like they're supposed to. So we're gonna reassemble the other side and we finally get to move on to the also important part of wheels and tires. And I'm really excited to show you guys uh, which ones we went with. Vic Auto has a lot of selection of wheels and tires. I actually did a whole video on that uh, when we were working on our 124. If you haven't seen that, make sure you check that video out. Um, I'll put a link down in the description for it for all the selection that they have. So I'm excited to show you guys. Let me read some of the other side and we'll get down to uh, revealing the big wheel choice. One hour later. So these are the tires that came on our car. These are the stock wheels and tires. These tires were definitely add-ons. These are like some directional tires, I guess is what you call these. But these are the stock 13-inch tires, 13-inch uh, wheels. And these are a 185-60 R13. So 185-60 on these. Uh, way thinner of a tire. Um, and just being a 13, it's not gonna cut it for what kind of performance we're trying to get out of this thing. Granted, it's a stock engine. There's nothing wrong with that, but we just want it to feel a little more sporty, a little bit more fun on the road. So we're gonna go from this, and we have chosen, right? Are you sitting down? Are you ready? Are you sure? Okay. We are going with these bad boys here. These are the torsion wheels that Vic Auto Sports carries. These are 205 50R15s. So these are 15 inch wheels compared to the 13s. So two inch bigger, and they have some good meat on the tires as well, these new hand cooked tires. And you can just see the difference. Let me get a little closer here. There you go. You can see how much more meat we're gonna get on the road. You know, I can lay my hand all the way across it, but in the same thing here, I've got tons of wiggle room. We're gonna get way more traction on here and it's a bigger tire, so we're gonna have way more meat on the road, and that's really, really exciting. And besides that, these are really, really good looking wheels. They have some really good selections. It was a really hard choice what I wanted to go with, uh, but I think these are gonna look really good on the car. And the good thing is, we're ready to put them on for a test fit. Now that we've got that stud kit installed, um, it's gonna be so easy to install these. We're gonna put them on all four corners. We're gonna put the car down on the ground on these new wheels and tires for the first time and look what those coilovers look like as well, because we've got them all adjusted at the same height, about seven millimeters up from the base of the threaded portion. And uh, this just kind of a starting point, to see where we're at, see if we want to go higher, lower, maybe a little bit of a rake. I don't know, we're gonna see. So we're gonna put these on, kind of bring the car out a little bit more, get a little bit more room around it to, to get a better 360 look, and then uh, see if we need to make any adjustments to those coilovers, which I'm sure we will. But let's get these things on the car and they're gonna look so, so good. If you wanna pick up a set for yourself, I'll make sure to put a link down in the description to all their wheel choices, because you can't go wrong. Um, these are the uh, smoked chrome is the color. It's not like shiny chrome, but it's not black either. I really, really like this design and definitely unique. All right, enough looking. Let's look at them when they're off the car. All right, are you ready to see these wheels in the stance of this all the way on the ground? I'm telling you, it's something. We're gonna have to adjust it, but it looks so good. You ready? All right, here we go. There it is. On the ground, all new tires, new wheels. Now this is really, really close. I can't even 
get my hand in there. So we're definitely gonna be adjusting our fronts. Again, we did seven millimeters all the way around. We're gonna have to definitely bring that down to give us more of a gap there. But when you look back here, oh, those look so good. I'm just gonna stand here for a second and stare at it. That's good, real good. Not too bad on the clearance on the backs. Again, remember we have the stiffer uh, springs in the back. So that's probably what's helping hold us up a little bit. We'll definitely have to make some adjustments on those 165s on the front. But this looks so good. Just have to make that adjustment. It'll probably help level out the car as well. But again, this looks so good. All put together. And then when you look through the wheels, modern brakes, nice new rotors, that stud kit with the lug nuts uh, look like it's supposed to be there. And I really, really like that. It just looks like it's supposed to be part of the car, how it's supposed to be originally. And I like how our caliper is just silver. You can see why I tried and went with the silver in the background just to kind of let it fade into the back. I don't want any bright red or yellow or anything like that. Just nice and simple. Now you can go any other color you want, you can paint them. I just went silver high heat just to really try and blend it. I don't want to take away from these amazing wheels. And it's just such a mean stance. I love it. Not gonna work on the front, unfortunately. I know we're gonna rub. So I have to make an adjustment there. Maybe a centimeter, bring it back down, see how it feels. But if I can't even get my hand in there, we're uh, definitely gonna be rubbing on the inside, especially that thick tire. <clears throat> What's really nice is if you just look at the straight shot down, we're actually like, the camber isn't bad. Definitely gonna take it to an alignment shop anyway, but the camber is not bad. And you can just see how much meat we have on the ground there. Just making all the contact. It's so good. So, so good. Mmm, so good and tasty. I love it. I'm just gonna stand here for a minute and uh, soak it all in. Definitely make some adjustments too. We'll make the adjustments on those perches and then we'll reset it and see how it looks. All right, so our ride height is a little different, as you can see from just a second ago, but it's been a lot of back and forth and back and forth. So we ended up going to 12 centimeters from the base of our threaded portion to where the um, roller bearing is. That was, that was our gauge on both sides in the front, so there's such a bigger gap. Now on this side, we went up to nine centimeters from uh, the base up to that roller bearing. Now the spring on the back is stronger, that's why we didn't have to go as high uh, on that threaded portion. But they're right about eight millimeters, and I'm taking that from, there's a, a tread line that I'm following to the edge of the fender all the way up, and the back is about seven and a half, the front is eight. So it looks a little different just because of the orientation of the car, but I think it'll a little settle in um, when we go driving, uh, you know, whenever that is. So if we take it around a few times, really let the suspension settle in, maybe it'll kind of level itself out a little bit, work its way down and, and where it wants to sit. Um, then we can make some more adjustments from there, but this is just a good point, starting point for us. Um, but one thing we did have to do is these tires are like maxing out that front wind, uh, wheel well. Is We were really close to rubbing. We did have to roll a little bit of the inside of the fender to get that uh, wheel to clear so if you're going to go at these wheels, you know, the 205.50 are a little big, so maybe do like a 195.45 um, would be a better fit for this. That way you don't have to roll fenders and massage a thing or two to make it fit, is what I'm saying. So um, otherwise, these look really good on them. I'm still really happy with it. It's a lot of meat on these tires uh, to get us on the, on the road. Um, but speaking of on the road, I think that's going to be next episode. I think this is where we're going to wrap up. We covered a lot of stuff in this past two days from replacing our entire brake system with all those new performance brake parts. Our new coilovers are installed um, with the new rotors, brake pads, um, all sorts of great stuff. And of course, our new wheels and tires are also installed. And we are basically ready for a test drive. We just have to bleed the brakes and then we'll be able to go for a little lap around the block, which will be very, very exciting. And I can't wait to take you guys along with me. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing really, really helps the channel, so please make sure you do that. Make sure you check out the playlist for this entire car. Make sure you check out our merchandise website. It's all good links down in the description down below. Make sure you guys check it out. And again, subscribe. Don't forget. Until next time, guys, we'll see you.